So many classic video games have a second player as sort of a foil to the main character, mainly just to give them co-op. Super Mario Bros. has the quintessential variation on this idea with Luigi, a near identical palette swap of Mario with the same motivations as him in order to be doing the same things. There's so little differentiation in the stage that they may as well have been the same character. Though later games would flesh him out more into his own person. Other examples include Tails or Hell Guy from Final Fight. It's just one of those pervasive ideas throughout gaming. Co-op games need to have a designated player too, right? Perhaps as a side effect of lacking co-op for his first three outings, Kirby avoided this for a very long time. There was no second player foil to him. When Kirby was presented with a co-op option, they threw some interesting spins on it. There was the unique helper mechanic where Kirby could force his foes to join his side, there were multiple Kirbys from when he was split into four, but never was there really unique character specifically designated as Kirby's player too. Enter Bandana Waddle Dee. There's something endearing about this little guy, right? I think everyone likes him. I mean, obviously he's adorable, but there's gotta be more going on here. Bandana Waddle Dee was originally just a joke boss in Kirby Superstar and its remake, but after that he became something more. In Return to Dreamland, he's the closest thing to a player too that there is. Sure, there's King DDD and Meta Knight, but they fill ostensibly different roles to Kirby. One is a rival and the other has a sometimes friend, mentor, it's hard to say what's going on with Meta Knight. Bandana Waddle Dee, though, is just Kirby's friend who likes going on adventures with him. Ever since his appearance in Return to Dreamland portrayed him like this, it's stuck. He's player two in Kirby and the Rainbow Curse and in Kirby and the Forgotten Land. In a lot of ways, I find the reason people like him similar to why Luigi is so beloved compared to Mario. Kirby overshadows Bandana Model D, though the games don't make a point about it nearly as much as the Mario games do. There's an appeal to this underdog type of character, a player too that never really gets his chance to shine. I think that's probably the biggest reason why Luigi's Mansion is so successful. People want to see Luigi in the spotlight. So it's only natural that this urge would transition over to the Player 2 character of the other major Nintendo platformer, and that Bandana Waddle D would grow more popular because of it. There's also a love for an ascended extra type of character which Bandana Waddle Dee also fits. He's not just any Waddle Dee, he's a Waddle Dee who trained with a spear and became ultra powerful. But it's a story there. Local mook kills God. Again, people love underdog characters, and Bandana Waddle Dee is the ultimate example of this in Kirby. He went from just a normal enemy, basically the Kirby version of a Goomba, to one of the most important characters in the series. That's dedication, and it's easy to see why that's endearing. Bandana Waddle Dee is a fascinating character because he's one of the most popular and discussed Kirby characters seemingly despite his simplicity. He's not super connected to the frankly overwrought lore, and he's not particularly distinct to the point that he's literally just a regular enemy wearing a bandana. However, I think it's due to this simplicity that he works. He's just a Waddle Dee who got really strong and became player 2 for Kirby. That's a feeling for people. People like rooting for the little guy. This has been Arcade Everlasting, who likes Meta Knight way more, signing off. Thank you for watching.